Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Upside Down Data. With Bitcoin and the crypto market chopping around in a pretty bearish way, and we're waiting to find out the direction of the next move, instead of just kind of watching the charts, I thought this would be a good time to discuss an aspect of investing psychology that we haven't covered before on the channel. I'm going to tell you about one way that this famous quote that you see up here on the screen can be misleading and potentially even get you into trouble. So if you guys like the content, subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us on Twitter. We'll put out regular updates there about our risk indicators and more. So you can find different versions of this quote from Warren Buffett, but they all convey the same idea that he only invests in assets that he understands. You hear this sentiment a lot in markets in general and in crypto too. In crypto, it often takes the form of DYOR, do your own research. This is what everyone says, very common refrain across the crypto sphere. And that can be okay advice in some ways. The problem is that it also puts you in danger of falling prey to a cognitive bias. And this one is not very well known relative some other, to some other cognitive biases that you've probably heard about, but it can hurt you as an investor. And this is this sense of understanding bias. It's a very common issue in crypto. What it shows us is that in investing, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Here's why. There are thousands upon thousands of cryptocurrencies. And so as crypto investors, we are faced with trying to understand not just the big guns like Ethereum and Solana, but numerous others like Ocean Protocol and New Cypher, Radium, and on and on and on. This problem is sometimes called choice overload. When we feel overwhelmed by the number of choices, we sometimes rely on poor decision strategies. This applies not only to cryptocurrencies, but also to the kind of cereal that you wanna buy at the supermarket or any other decision where you might be overwhelmed by the number of options. So how are you supposed to navigate this? Well, as I've already alluded in the context of crypto, oftentimes what you're told to do is simply to do your own research. Here's a page from Binance Academy, where they attempt to educate investors to be safe in the crypto markets. And as they write here, the goal of this education is to be able to answer precisely why you are buying a currency and supporting a project. This is why you should do your own research according to Binance Academy. It sounds legit, right? It's not, it's not quite legit. Let's look at some research that demonstrates the problem. This article is called Circle of Incompetence, Sense of Understanding as an Improper Guide to Investment Risk. You can pause the video if you want to read the abstract in full. What it basically comes down to is that when people feel like they understand an asset, they tend to perceive it as less risky, regardless of whether they actually really understand the asset and regardless of how risky the asset actually is. And these bias risk perceptions do not predict actual asset performance. So what happens is that people pick up a little knowledge about an asset and that makes it feel less risky to them. So they allocate too much of their portfolio to it. They take on too much risk and then their portfolio underperforms as a result. If they're unlucky, they might get totally wrecked. To see how this works, let's take a quick look at what they did in this research. It's pretty cool methodology. First, they recruited a bunch of people and they had each of, the, each of those people read about 10 randomly selected companies from the S&P 500. Each person got a different set of 10 and they collected data for almost all 500 companies on the S&P. So this turned out to be a very large data set. For each company, participants read a short description of what the company does and how it works. And then they rated how risky they thought investing in the company was. And they also rated their subjective sense of how well they understood what the company does. That's that sense of understanding. And what the researchers found was that people rated companies as less risky to invest in to the extent that they subjectively felt like they understood the companies. But then the researchers tracked the performance of each of those companies on the S&P 500 over the next year, 12 months. And they found that people's subjective risk perceptions about each company had no predictive validity. They were completely unrelated to how the stocks actually performed over the next year. And here's the thing, it's actually really easy to manipulate people's sense of understanding of how an asset works. 
and therefore to change how they perceive the risk of investing in that asset. Check out what they did in this other study. They repeated this first study that I just told you about, except that they added an experiment to it. So in this next study, each person who participated was randomly assigned to one of two groups. The first group had exactly the same experience as in the previous study that I just told you about. But in the second group, when they were presented with the descriptions of the S&P 500 companies, there was one key change that the researchers made, which was that they changed the order of the sentences in the description of the company. They just scrambled the description of the company. Here's an example. So this is an excerpt from one of the companies, Lamb Research. The descriptions, like you can see here from this excerpt, didn't read as well when the sentences were scrambled. They were less clear and they were harder to follow. They provided less sense of understanding. And afterwards, the study participants predicted how risky they thought investing in this company's stock or whatever company it was in their stock and how they thought the stock would perform. So they rated perceived risk of the asset and they predicted how the asset would perform over the coming period of time. And sure enough, people in the condition with the paragraphs all mixed up, with the sentences rather all mixed up, they thought that the stocks were riskier and would perform worse. But those stocks did not in fact perform worse. And so people relied on how well they felt like they understood the company, but that turned out to be totally irrelevant information. So the moral of the story is that although deeply understanding a company or a crypto project or any assets fundamentals can improve your, your investment decision making, we also need to be careful about assets that we understand a little bit. Reading a thread on Twitter or watching a YouTube video by Coin Bureau is a good way to start learning about an asset, but it's not going to make you an expert overnight and it might cause problems by giving you an, an exaggerated sense of understanding. And that sense of understanding can distort your perceptions of the asset by making it seem less risky than it really is. So do your own research can be good advice if you're someone with the time and energy and ability to spend hours upon hours reading and thinking and evaluating. But most investors in crypto and beyond are not in that position. And so for most people, I contend that do your own research is bad advice more than it's good advice. Most people who do their own research end up with a little bit more knowledge than they had before, but potentially with a new blind spot about risk management that they're not even aware of. Basically, casual research can be worse than no research at all. For most of us, we can limit the influence of the sense of understanding bias by making sure that we focus on the process of investment and having a sound strategy. We need to diversify our portfolios it's good to use semi-automated strategies like dollar cost averaging on a particular interval to buy and sell. It can also help to invest mostly in assets that you really don't need to do your own research to know are legit, like Bitcoin, the blue chips. So some food for thought. Hope you guys found this useful. Thanks for watching.